Welcome to week six, Bible Studies for Life. We're still in Revelation chapter three, the sixth church we're going to be looking at today, the church in Philadelphia, not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, not that church. If you're in Philadelphia right now and you're wondering, is this written to our church? Well, no, but yeah, it's written to all of us, right? Uh, that church, the city of brotherly love, that's what we call it. Philadelphia is a compound word in Greek. It means brotherly love. That's what this city is about. Okay, so let's read. It says, Write to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Thus says the Holy One, the true one, the one who has the key of David, who opens and no one will close, and who closes and no one opens. I know your works. Look, I have placed before you an open door that no one can close because you have but little power, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. This description of Jesus obviously is setting up what he is saying to them, right? The one who opens doors and closes doors. He is the one who has all power. He is the one who makes things happen. This church in Philadelphia, well, Philadelphia is, uh, and this is the gateway to the east. This is the, uh, the main road, the main route. If you're going to Rome, you're going to go through Philadelphia to get to Rome. If you're coming from from there, and if you're going to the east, if you're headed back uh, to Turkey and all that, you're going to go through Philadelphia. It's on the main road, right? But the church is not a large church, right? They they have limited strength, right? He he says you have but little power, okay? But they've kept his word. They have been faithful. They they've stayed faithful to the teaching faithful to truth, right? They've not denied my name. You know that as many of the churches that we've read about during this time, there there's great challenge to them uh, from from Jews. If, they, if they're in an area where there are synagogues, there's challenge there. But from the Romans, there's challenge to deny the name of Jesus, to not speak or preach in the name of Jesus, to say Caesar is Lord, not Jesus is Lord. But he says, you've been faithful, uh, right? You've endured this persecution. Here's a church that's doing what they can. And, and what we know is, look what he says, I have placed before you an open door that no one can close. How about that? God says, the Lord says, Jesus says, I have put before you an open door. There's, a, there's an opportunity that's in front of you right there. And nobody else can close it, okay? God says, I have put this opportunity in, in front of you. It's right there, and it's not going away. I'm the one who is, he's the one who opens, and no one closes, closes, no one opens. That's who Jesus is, right? That's what he does. And he says, I have placed before you an open door that no one can close. You just, this there's an opportunity there, great opportunity, right? God's on your side. God is on your side. Uh, look at this, this next verse. Note this, I will make those from the synagogue of Satan, we've heard about them before, right? The synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews and are not, but are lying. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and they will know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to endure, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is going to come on the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown. The Lord says, I, I'm on your side. There's a synagogue of Satan, right? These people that claim to be Jews that are not their lives, is they're, they're coming after you. They're going to bow down in front of you. See that? They're going to bow down at your feet. And they will know that I've loved you. They'll know that who you are, right? So here's the challenge for us, okay? An open door gets placed before us, and, and clearly, here's, here's the thing. One thing that keeps us from walking through the open door is the opposition, right? We, we are afraid of the opposition. We're afraid of those who have intimidated us. We're afraid of those who make it hard, who make it difficult. We're afraid of those or, or we're, we're intimidated by them. We are hesitant to act, right? But he says, look, I, I'm on your side. Now, there are other reasons that we don't go through open doors. One is because we're not looking. We don't, we don't, we're not looking out. We don't have a vision. We're not seeking that that opportunity the Lord has placed before us. So, you know, without vision or obedience. Maybe the Lord's put the open door there and we just don't want to go through it. <laughs> we just want to be who we are and do what we do. We, want, we don't want to do that other thing. That's disobedience, right? 
Or maybe it's there's no leadership. The leaders will not walk through. The followers can't follow because the leaders aren't leading. Or maybe there's no followers. The followers won't follow. The followers refuse to go along. They, they, they're content. They want to stay where they are. Or maybe um, they just don't care. Right? But that's not who this people, this church is, do you think? No faith. God can't do that. A small view of God. God will never use us. You know, it's not a small view of us that we're too small. It's a small view of God that God is unable to use us. That's what that is. Or maybe it's just fear of everything. Fear of change. Fear of outside influences. Fear of losing influence. Fear of failure. Fear of success. Churches go through doors because they have clear vision. They see what God has placed before them and they're ready to go because they, they're ready to be obedient. They'll do anything. They'll go anywhere and do anything to follow the Lord because they trust their leadership. They believe their leadership is seeking the Lord and they're willing to follow them because they're, they, they love the world. They know we've got to reach the world. They're passionately evangelistic, so they're ready to go because they're full of faith and they know whatever it is that God wants to do, God can do through us, and so they're ready to go and they're courageous. I don't care what the difficulties are, what the challenges are, somebody's got to do the hard thing and we're going to do it. That's why they walk through the open door. But for some reason... Some churches don't do that. Here are the open doors before them. The challenge is there. The Lord says, look, I am going to give you victory. In the middle of this challenge, I'm going to give you victory. I will keep you from this testing that will come. The one who conquers, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never go out again. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. God's promise of provision, God's promise of carrying you to the end, of holding on, of never losing you is always there. He protects from the challenges that come, the difficulties, the, the harm that comes. Even if it is physical harm, the Lord does not abandon his people ever. Never abandons us. Never has and never will. So don't ever think that he has in some moment left you. And don't ever think that he will lead you down a path where he will then leave you alone when you're halfway down the road. He never will. He never has. The Lord will not abandon you. He'll carry you all the way to the end. So trust in him, right? Ask God, where are the open doors in my life? Pray for that vision. Pray for leadership, right? And be courageous. Don't be afraid of the opposition. Don't worry. The Lord will cause those people to bow down at your feet, and they'll see that you are loved by God. You're not abandoned by God. All the things, the horrible things they say about you, they'll see they're not true. That will become obvious. That's who God is. That's the promise God has made to his people. He will keep his promise. So trust him. This is message to the church in Philadelphia is the message to us, isn't it? Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that's helped as you prepare, as you study, as you teach, as you just go through this book. I hope that's been helpful to you. Comment, subscribe to the channel, share it with others. Really appreciate that. Uh, like the channel, obviously like the uh, videos. That helps. God bless. We'll see you next time.